Sorry about space. Go ahead. Uh, you know, the Biden administration, they just announced its intention to retain the National Space Council. And this is on top of the White mm -hmm. House voicing its support for the Space Force, yes. NASA's Artemis program. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are three programs or policies that President Trump and the Trump administration put in place. So would it be fair to say that space is one of the, and space policy is one of the few areas where President Biden actually agrees with his predecessor? I think that that sounds accurate to me. Uh, look, I think the president believes that um, the National Space Council, as as you uh, as you just conveyed or just asked about, uh, provides uh, an opportunity to generate national space policy strategies, synchronize on America's space activities at a time of unprecedented activity. It's also an opportunity um, to gen generate by America's own activities in space. So uh, it certainly is a program uh, or a council, I should say. He's excited to uh, keep in place, and one uh, I think it's fair to say he agrees uh, with the past administrations. Uh, maintaining the program. You're goddamn right. And uh, regarding uh, the WHO, former President Trump accused the WHO of being, quote, a puppet of China. Uh, does this report confirm that claim? Well, I think we've expressed our concerns about uh, the role, uh, the lack of transparency, the lack of data that has been provided broadly to the global community. We believe there are steps that can be taken moving forward to ensure that an independent investigation, that uh, global experts are involved in the next stage of this process. Uh, but we also believe that the WHO is a body that the United States should be a part of, that in order to make changes happen, we need to have a seat at the table. And that's why we rejoined the WHO. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Drone Tech, and I have a few things I want to say about what we just watched. But first, some breaking news from healthwithdronetech.com. You're not going to believe this, but a new study reveals that tiny fish in the Amazon are able to survive piranha bites. Here's how. The three-striped cory, a small catfish, is able to survive multiple bites from piranhas completely unfazed. The secret lies inside its specialized scales. Scientists found that these fish are able to survive piranha bites due to the collagen in their unique scales. Scales. Just as collagen is the main protein that protects these fish, it might also quite possibly be the most important protein inside us humans. This product contains research-backed ingredients that promote anti-aging quickly and effectively. Get my favorite multi-collagen for 51% off today by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com or by clicking the link in the description or pinned comment. Well, well, well. That was twice, or actually it was three times in one press conference that Circleback Saki and the media were forced to admit that Trump was right. First, he was right about Space Force, but as you remember, Trump was mocked by Hollywood, late night shows, the media, and Democrats endlessly. They even spread the lie that Trump stole the Space Force logo from Star Trek, which anyone who knows anything about Star Trek knows was utterly false. In fact, the Space Force logo looks pretty much like the Air Force Space Command logo which has been around since the 80s. Trump was also right about the virus and the fact that it came from the Wuhan lab, which was also mocked by all the previously mentioned parties. They've even said that speaking about such things is inciting hate against Asian Americans. They're still saying that, even going as far as to say any criticism of China is inciting hate of Asian Americans. Something they have no evidence of and which is pretty clearly an attempt to squash criticism of their CCP masters. Lastly, Trump was right about the World Health Organization's corruption and their close working relationship relationship with the CCP. Their so-called study absolving China of blame has been widely criticized as incomplete and untrustworthy. Surprisingly, even CNN has reported on this fact, admitting that based on what we now know, the most likely source of COVID-19 was that Wuhan lab. Folks, this is classic drive-by media tactics. They fill Americans' heads with misinformation only to quietly walk it back later once they've gotten their use out of the big lie. That's it for this one. Please hit that like button share and subscribe and I'll see you all next video.